In fact, it was almost half time before the home side went in front, and you'd have thought by now that defences wouldn't give Henrik Larsson a free header inside the box. The goal count already started. Last season's top scorer provided a real touch of class for a second. Now, who said Henrik Larsson was past his best? Last year, Dunfermline would have crumbled, but this season's vintage already appeared to have more of a sparkle, and a superb equaliser from Gary Dempsey made Celtic sweat for the points. And only a top-class save from Rab Douglas near the end kept out Barry Nicholson and ensured a winning start for the champions. This was a game Dunfermline should have won comfortably, if only they'd taken their chances. First to lose his nerve in front of goal was Sean Kilgannon. Livingston's hero last week was Rolando Zanatti, but he was out of luck this time, denied by the post. Dunfermline, though, get the breakthrough in 28 minutes. A wonderful strike from Stevie Crawford, but his tally for the season off and running. Craig Brewster's reverse pass split the Livy defence, and Crawford finished in style. The Brewster-Crawford strike force looks sure to become a productive partnership and early in the second half they combined for Dunfermline's second. This time Stevie returned the compliment by setting up Big Craig for his first goal for the Pars. Livy were on the back foot and only the woodwork kept Dunfermline at bay. Crawford was unfortunate with the first effort and Jason Deere wasn't far away with the follow-up. A few minutes later, Deer came close again. Brewster once more with the setup, and again it's the upright to Livy's rescue. Livingston, though, did get on the score sheet three minutes into stoppage time. Substitute David Sousa was their marksman, but in the end, it was nothing more than a consolation with Dunfermline deserving the win. And following on from the terrific 4 1 win at Easter Road on Wednesday, Dunfermline made a wonderful start at Tannadice and I'd be highly surprised if Gary Dempsey's ever scored a better goal. Certainly in front of the TV cameras anyway. There's not much a goalkeeper can do when the ball moves this much in the air. If United were shocked by that, they found themselves two goals down after only 16 minutes. You just can't stop Stevie Crawford scoring at the moment. And when the United defence got themselves in a bit of a fanco, the Scotland man claimed his third goal in as many games. When you're hot, you're hot, and Crawford can't put a foot wrong at the moment. Gently encouraged at half-time by manager Alex Smith, United came out strongly after the interval and had a goal back within five minutes. Derek Lilly taking full advantage of Dunfermline's unusual reluctance to put in a tackle. Perhaps the Pars defenders were worried about giving away a penalty, and Lilly made them pay the price. The quality of Dunfermline's goalkeeping was just as good as their finishing and Marco Rutenbeek played a full part in securing the three points. Motherwell were particularly disappointing given their recent displays and yet might well have taken the lead in the first minute when Martin Corrigan and James McFadden combined to set up Derek Adams. The match could have been altogether different had Scott Wilson not produced a timely block. It didn't take Dunfermline long to get up to their usual tricks though. The terrific understanding between front pair Craig Brewster and Stevie Crawford in evidence once again when the former played in the latter. Crawford unable to claim his seventh goal of the season, with keeper Stevie Woods ready for his shot. Motherwell lost German defender Daniel Sengewald due to a nasty head knock and at times had problems coping with Sean Kilgannon's pace and width and Lee Bullen almost took advantage. Bullen won absolutely everything in the air, as you'll see later. Craig Brewster put in another hard shift yesterday and almost got himself a goal just before half-time. And after the break, Stevie Crawford really tested the keeper's reflexes. Stevie Woods once again determined not to be beaten. But Dunfermline kept at it and eventually got their award on 73 minutes. Barry Nicholson's cross, perfect for Lee Bullen. It's Bullen's first goal of the season, was the only difference between the sides and left the away manager absolutely fuming with his team. Dunfermline and Thistle have never met in the Premier League. They'll both be hoping that this is the start of a regular relationship. Stevie Crawford gave the Jags an early message of things to come. But it was Scott Thompson who scored the opener. The right foot, a weapon of destruction for Thistle. 
What a strike. Mind you, the Jags wall was obviously constructed without planning permission. Thompson nearly scored a second. Nicholson and Bullen combined to set it up. The first flash of Thistle came courtesy of a Jimmy Mitchell header from a Lily Cross, but Marco Rutenbeck wasn't severely threatened. Into the second half and Thistle's worries deepened. David Lilly was sent off for a shocker of a tackle on Gary Dempsey, who limped out of the game. Actually, given the nature of this assault, he was lucky to crawl out of the game. It was a straight red from Hugh Dallas. But as so often happens, the 10 men rallied and equalised. The penalty came from the handball, not conclusive from these pictures. But Jamie Mitchell was not in the mood for hanging around for a debate. Good finish, 1-1. But then it all swung the par's way. Barry Nicholson popped up with a glorious header for his first goal of the season. A small reminder for Bertie Votes that he wouldn't mind being selected alongside club mate Stevie Crawford. And talking of Crawford, the rest of the afternoon was his. First the loneliness of the long distance runner and a glorious end to the trip. And there was more to follow. The Scotland man was set up by the right foot of Jason Dare for his second goal of the afternoon, then Fenland's fourth. Next stop for Stevie. Well, it's Ricky Vick, isn't it? Dunfermline hadn't recorded a win at Rugby Park for 10 years but played a counter-attacking tactic that unsettled Kilmarnock during the first half. Two and a half minutes before the interval, the breakthrough came from Craig Brewster. The first touch wasn't everything it could have been, but the finish was perfect. Into the second half, Killy equalised with what looked like a brilliant goal from Greg Shields. Now see if you can register some surprise on Greg's face because what looked like precision was in fact a sliced cross that caught everyone out, especially Wittenbeek. While the Dunfermline keeper was doing a David Seaman at one end, Gordon Marshall showed his very best Bruce Lee at the other. Gary Dempsey on the receiving end and referee Ian Fife decided that a yellow card was worthy punishment. Marshall could consider himself fortunate to remain on the park, a fact not lost on Jim Jeffries. That was quickly forgotten though when he pulled off a remarkable save from Lee Bullen's penalty. Just as Marshall had made amends, Lee Bullen did too. Just before the hour, despite some desperate defending and a good save from the Killy stopper, Bullen slotted his fourth goal of the season with some venom. Gary Dempsey denied by Marshall's leg and it couldn't have fallen better for Lee Bullen. 2-1. Jim Jeffries brought on Chris Boyd for Gary McSwiggan in an attempt to salvage something from the match and within three minutes it was all square. Boyd reacted first when Jose Kutongo's header was flicked in his direction and a share of the points was probably the fairest result. Final score, Kamarnock 2, Dunfermline 2.